Hello there and thank you so much for keeping us company. This is why in the morning, a very good Monday morning to you. My name is Deva Hilary. In this particular segment, we are looking at the, we are having a focus on the Ministry of Agriculture where Peter Munya CS has been posted from industrialization and is coming into a time where Kenya is now staring to a food crisis following uh, the locusts that have just invaded recently and other cases that we have been seeing in regards to uh, farmers being not paid and uh, so much has been happening in the Ministry of Interior and joining me on set is a political analyst Silas Ritsua and Oguda Walter. He's a resident analyst. You want to see, we want to understand where we are as a nation and looking into the new docket that the CS Munya has been given. What will he, will he, will he do different? That is, uh, keep it Y254, uh, sending all your comments or questions to all our social media platforms at Y254 channel. My handle is at Morani Hillary. Welcome to the program. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning, sir. It's a pleasure having you here. Mm. Now, uh, we had the president reshuffle the cabinet, mm. and now we have uh, CS Peter Munya coming into the Ministry of Agriculture. If we could uh, look back a little bit, this is a ministry that has, has, has been uh, plagued with a lot, a lot, a lot of issues, beginning from contraband goods like the sugar. You remember we had the the mercury in the sugar, we had issues with the farmers not being paid, we had uh, maize farmers uh, to an extent where the country was in hunger and uh, we imported maize from Mexico. Mm. And now we're having a locust. And this is an issue uh, most of the critics or analysts are saying we are staring at a food crisis. This is something that has been happening every first quarter of the year, keep on saying that because we see people dying because of hunger. Now, this man has come to this office. What will he do differently? And before you respond to that, Elitzwa, uh, how, do you, how do you judge him coming to this space? Uh, thank you for having me this morning. My views on Peter Munya, I still see him as incompetent. Why? We ha he has been in the Ministry of Industrialization. First of all, he was given the Ministry of East African uh, community. Uh, then he went to Ministry of Industrialization, where we expect uh, the Ministry of Industrialization need to nurture new talents, graduates from university and uh, other people who are also innovators in the Ministry of Industrialization to create job opportunities in the country. But uh, apparently it's something that he didn't do something that he was just there like a puppet, something that he was just there to, just to, because he was a governor. Now, uh, after he failed to clinch the governor position where he was uh, defeated by uh, Mrungi, mm -hmm. then uh, he was rewarded by that, um, by that, mm -hmm. just to keep him busy and not to attack Muru Muru Kiraitu yeah. in the county. Now, uh, where he has been brought now that is the backbone of the country. Agriculture, we have known it from days back as the, uh, the backbone of the country. I don't see him doing much. Because one, these people are the cabinet ministers. And they work together. And I believe if I have an idea and we are meeting, you see, Matiangi was uh, first of all brought in as a in charge of the meetings in the cabinet. So far, I believe if these people were working together to ensure the big four agendas are realized, I believe if I'm working with my friend in the same, uh, uh, in the same environment, pushing for an, a political agenda, like the big four agenda for the president, if he has an idea that he believes can make me or my ministry achieve, then he can bring the idea to me. Then we sit down and talk. But because of political ambitions and, uh, and, and, and political uh, uh, things of 2022, we see there's no service, de service delivery to the country. And uh, let me tell you this. Come 2022, Uru will not have achieved is big for agenda. Because right now, 
we are focusing much on the BBI. Okay. We want to see the BBI sail through, no matter what. Okay. And that's why there are funds set aside for the BBI. We have uh, a, a committee set aside to ensure that the BBI goes and takes charge. So it was a wrong decision to have Amunya come into the Ministry of Agriculture. All right, we will get to that. Uh, it is, it is a wrong decision because he is incompetent. Okay. And those are my, 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 my reservations mm -hmm. and my observations that I stand to be challenged on. All right. And questioned over them. Okay. Walter, mm. uh, was the decision to have uh, Munya come to the Ministry of uh, Agriculture sound? I think it is contrary to what my brother thinks because uh, it looks agricultural more than it's industrialized. I, I want to explain this that when the con 2010 constitution was pro promulgated, uh, there was that notion that the CSS would be technocrats. Those who have studied what they have been appointed to do. And that is why we had like uh, Honorable Musheru in it because Honorable Musheru is technologically savvy. Eh? He's good, he's an IT person. Eh? So he was uh, like appointed to head that ministry because he had the competence. Uh, they tried, they tried at first like putting the people who have studied, who are the experts of that field in every ministry. And uh, it took political twist when when you are politically correct okay when you are felt that you if you are uh, picked then you will balance some political equations then you put there and as my brother says that's why munya munya was given the ministry of industrialization the east african whatever but i've never had anything historical about honorable munya on industrialization i don't know how many industries he created or i don't know how many jobs he created while he was a governor so i had problem with that i had problem with that now that is uh, given the agricultural docket and uh, for that matter that we are still doing very traditional agriculture in this country and it looks like it can do traditional agriculture. It's, I think it's, it's a, a bit understandable. It's not good, but a bit understandable that maybe can handle that more than where it is because it has to be somewhere to be politically relevant or to, be, to balance that political equation. The next thing is that uh, we have seen him swing into action. Yeah, he has prayed you. So the other day he's praying locusts using a helicopter. Yes, and he said he has fixed it. Eh? He said that he has fixed, uh, he, he was talking about the swamps. It's like he had studied the locust and uh, there, there were swamps of locust everywhere. And now he had spotted those swamps and he was dealing with them diligently one by one. And I saw him on TV saying that it was okay, he had done it, it was okay for him. So the fact that he, the, the fact that the other guy was telling us to take photos and post, he swam into action and we saw him in the field doing it mm -hmm. and the complaints have gone down. So if we can fix some of these problems, then let's have him. Uh, you, you want to say a little bit? Yes, I, I want to turn into what he has talked about. Eh? Mm -hmm. Munya was a governor, Meru. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a governor, mm -hmm. he had also dockets, the CECs. And I believe uh, agriculture was part of it mm -hmm. in Meru. Mm -hmm. So when we sit down and try to analyze uh, what he has done productively for uh, Meru while he was a governor, agriculturally, I can tell you it's null. It is during his tenure as a governor that uh, Mira was banned from being imported to other okay. countries and there was there were so many issues on that thing mm -hmm. during this time so when you tell me he's going to fix it i don't understand how first of all munya is a lawyer is <laughs> a, a lawyer from the university of nairobi then he, he got his uh, masters uh, from i think outside so this is a, a, a his profession is a lawyer so when it comes to agriculture I will start by looking at from Meru. What did he do? During his tenure, we saw, and I've mentioned it, Mira was banned from being imported. So there were negotiations, even there was a war between the president and the Meru County. 
the, the, that time. So on service delivery, and as I said earlier, he has just been placed there politically. Because one, Kiunjuri seems, as it is said, eh, to be the, 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 the DP's point man in those areas. So he was being seen like a man who is coming up to create himself to inherit also who in those areas. And also, uh, when we talk of uh, Uhuru's uh, legacy, and I uh, always look at the big four agendas, and I say, by 2022, he'll not have achieved any. Mm -hmm. Because he talks of housing, he talks of food security, he talks of health, mm -hmm. and he talks of uh, there's something here. Manufacturing yeah. and industrialization. Yeah, manufacturing and industrialization. And when you look at this, let us start where Munya was, industrialization. What has he done? <laughs> Recently, we had students from uh, graduates from the universities and I can say it's almost 20,000 graduates from the universities that we have all in the entire 47 counties. Mm -hmm. There's no industrialization that has been created. There's no employment opportunity that has been created so that we can have uh, revenue collection from the employed, uh, the employed sector. There are not even, uh, we can say, interim uh, job, op uh, job opportunity that he has created in the industrialization ministry, none. When we look at the, 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 the paper, we talk of CARLO, the mm -hmm. Kenya Agriculture Research and Livestock, the Kenya Agriculture Re Re Livestock and Research Organization. When they came up with this issue, they highlighted about the inversion of uh, locusts. Mm -hmm. What does it tell us? We don't take the research seriously. These are institutions. They are funded. They, they fund for research. Okay? But when such a reports come out and the government overlooks it, mm -hmm. it, it seems there is, uh, the, 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 there is some lack of seriousness in the ministries. And in these few days that he has been appointed, we have seen some levels of uh, trying to remember. I wonder if remember, has he remember, that? Remember, Munya, uh, uh, the one who has left, eh? Kiunjuri, yeah. had already negotiated, and there was a budget from the, I think, from the European, uh, which was around 250 million, that was meant to spray, the, and he had people in place to head measures in place for spraying so munya has just come to implement so munya has come to implement what was started mm -hmm. okay it is not that he's the one who did but there was a budget i remember even Nani when he was uh, issuing a press statement on that mm -hmm. there was a budget of uh, 250 million i believe mm -hmm. and i stand to be corrected on that there was a budget that was allocated from the european union that's going to uh, help in the in the in the spraying of the okay mm -hmm. and uh, there are mechanisms that were put in place okay those are some of the things that was there. so he has come and he has started with that right. so it is not something that he, he started okay okay yes i want us to to move to to the next uh, thing we've had issues with farmers not being paid especially tv farmers and coffee farmers as well as maize farmers we've had issues with the ncpb and i remember actually we'll be listening into what uh, the president was saying during the nairobi sk show when he was reprimanding the cs uh, uh the well, yeah. well, yeah. well, yeah. well, yeah. because mm. of farmers not being paid now munya has come in, into a time where now farmers there's little uh farm inputs we're talking of fertilizers we've had issues with fertilizers so walter what do you think this man will be doing in the next very few? actually we speak of 100 days in the, office the president was always furious with the the former minister the former cs kunjuri about the payments of of uh, of the farmers you know where presidents come from central people majorly depend on agriculture and like where I come from, where we fish and, and dig gold and all that. Mm -hmm. So people depend on agriculture. People are failing. You saw, I saw a video, a disturbing video of farmers parading their milks and then kicking them that they don't have market, they don't have anywhere to sell them. There were people crying of like uh, their teas are going to waste, coffee, whatever, because they were not being paid. And uh, apart from this locust and social media thing, I think uh, the president was feeling that where it comes from, from the backyard, they are not getting the service that they should get because the guy in charge of that ministry is not delivering as he should. And you know, in that address, apart from 
doing the resuffling, replacing Kinyuri with Munya, he gave some intense incentives. He instructed the Treasury to be releasing some funds to go pay farmers. So the, the coming in of Munya is not only coming in with the, with the change of ministry, but is changed and given funds, meaning he has no option but to deliver. Even if he's a lawyer, he has no option. He has to deliver because he's, he has money, he has um, some starting, as my friend says, where Kunjuri had started. So w having money and uh, having like a head start and uh, working on a ministry that is at the heart of president, so there's no option that people will be paid because money is there. And already it's, it has started. Like there's money which was given to um, KCC. The new KCC, yeah. So milk will be getting market there. This money, which has the, this bonus, which is going to be given to people growing tea and all that. So things are going to be good. Yeah. Cyrus, how do you think this money will perform in regards to farmers? Because these are the people who cry most. Yeah. Uh, what strategies do you think you will be bringing on board? Because uh, I don't know. You're saying is a failure, but uh, what? How do you think he will go around this thing? Uh for him to go around these things, first of all, is to work with uh, key institutions, like the research institutions, the ag agricultural research institutions, to understand the plight of farmers. Okay? We have an issue of the sugar in the western region. When I talk of western region, I talk including Nyanza, mm -hmm. the sugar belt region. Yeah. Okay? We have Muroni, we have Miwani. We have Mumias, we have Nzoya, we have other sugar Malibu. companies in those areas. The sugar report, the sugar committee, has not been acted up to now. The report that was submitted, we just here, I had uh, recently, uh, when uh, the, 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 the governor of Kakamega was speaking in the BBI uh, Saturday, saying the president will be coming and the minister of agriculture to so that they can uh, work on the report. How are they going to work on the report? So what we need to see right now are actions. Mm -hmm. Remember the Senate held uh, a Senate sitting in Eldor, it was in issue mm -hmm. the other time, and you saw how furious the farmers were. Farmers asking, who is this cartel? Name the cartel so that you can deal with the cartel. Mm -hmm. Farmers having maize, farmers cannot supply their maize to NCPB. There were caps that were placed on the farmers that you only need to supply two or one bag of maize. You see, you see, when you frustrate these people, and this is where they get their daily income, where the government needs to collect the revenue from them, mm -hmm. then are we creating our country economic wise or we are destroying our country. So these are some of the things the minister needs to look into. He first needs to look into the files that were mentioned earlier since 2013. The farmer didn't start crying yesterday. Mm -hmm. They started crying since, uh, let me say, uh, when the maize thing started coming from uh, those times, the, 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 the Nusumkate government. Mm -hmm. There was an issue of maize. Right. Okay? It yeah. didn't start today. It started a long time ago. The issue of uh, the, 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 the sugar companies didn't start today. The issue of uh, tea it didn't start today. So for us to, or for the ministry to work on these issues, it has now to go back and sit and revisit all these issues that were raised by the farmers. <laughs> then he will work in the best way. But if he ignores and thinks he can come up with other new directives, the way I saw he came up and said, the milk farmer, the, the milk will now be increased from 25 to 33 shillings. Fine. How is it? Uh, there's a one, what, there's one, what we say you say, but now there's what we call implementation. Mm -hmm. How will it be implemented? Because now, how many dairy uh, factories do we have that are government? We have only KCC, that is government. The rest are personal entities, and we know. So these are some of the things that we need to see. We need to see KCC being into the 47 counties, not only in Nairobi, 
Mm. Okay, we need to sure. see KCC being in the 47 counties. Okay, so that we can say our agricultural sector is growing. So he has to work with the industrialization ministry, okay, and the devolution ministry to see that how is he going to achieve eh, the, the, the spread of KCC in all these areas. How are we going to revive these mumias? How are we going to revive these other institutions, the agricultural institutions that are in the country? So these are some of the things that we need to look into. By the way, Hillary, yeah. uh, the only factory in my county is called Sony Sugar. It's dying. It's on its knees dying now. Because? Because of management and all that stuff. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So I, I would like to tell the news here, yes, I, I know he's watching, that you should think beyond Mount Kenya. You should think beyond Central, where there are outcries. Mm -hmm. There are outcries everywhere, agriculturally. And uh, I think the fact that these people can be changed, especially these sensitive ministries like agriculture, mm -hmm. I really recommend that one person should not serve there for more than one year before, because you serve and then cartels get hold of you, you do their what, exactly what they want and then you just Actually, do for their the last eight years, yes. there have been three, three CSEs in the Ministry of Agriculture. There yes. should even be more. I suggest there should be more because cartels are everywhere. Mm -hmm. My younger brother was telling me when he grows up he would like to be a cartel. <laughs> because he thinks it's what only cartels cartel? who... <laughs> yeah, because he thinks only cartels are the people who make it, who are not disturbed by it. They are the people who, are, who can make money the way they want. So for us to deal with cartel thing, I would ask the president that let's, let's have new people. In fact, very charismatic people who can handle the mix of Mr. Fixit of this one mm -hmm. to handle these things. Thank oh. you. Now, uh, uh, before I let you on that point, we've had problems with maize. Mm. Maize. And this maize has caused us to have uh, fluctuating prices on uh, maize flour. Mm. What will we do to ensure that the unga now goes down in terms of prices and then we have surplus? You know, the problem is that we, besides all these, besides all these agricultural problems, mm -hmm. we also have problems with the economy. So it's not one thing. It's a multiple of problems. You remember we just recently we, we had we, issues with aflatoxin. Yes. And some of the companies were shut down and then they were later... Uh, uh, as if now, as if now, those guys were saying, you know, it's like saying that we were wrong, so sorry, there's no aflatoxin now, we were wrong. It's like it's, it's cartelism, it's corruption, it's, it's everything. It's like a mix, a cocktail of problems for Kenya. <laughs> that needs a, a real good Mr. Fix-It, like, I don't know whether, or, or you, you see Matiangi, mm -hmm. Matiangi is good, eh? If he can be, like, be rotating in the ministries, mm -hmm. he serves in the interior for one year, he comes and serves in agriculture for one year. I think he can fix it. He can also fix this thing because he has really been trying. But, uh, but you see when he does that, way, there will be no consistency. When, when he leaves, things will change. Uh, you know, yes. he was put to be like a prefect of all CSS. So he should fix it from there. Because, okay. yes. Uh, okay. Uh, we're not talking about him, but if, if he was the prefect, why has the Ministry of Agriculture failed? Because of politics. You see the Tangatanga's GQ injury belonging to Tangatanga and then him belonging to, I, I don't want to put him in Kieleweke, but we know, uh, we, we, can, we can figure with our minds who is subscribing to and all that, yeah? Mm -hmm. So when somebody, like when somebody gets orders from another quarters, I wish we could be separating politics from development, politics from development, like politics be politics and then development projects be development projects so, so that we have the competent people in these ministries mm -hmm. uh, yes, where we've gone wrong eh, mm -hmm. is when uh, we've uh, we believed in the new constitution the 2010 constitution whereby we saw it was fit for a technocrat to be a minister or a cs mm -hmm. But later, along the way, they have become more political than technocrats. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, Dr. Matiangi, before, he was executing his duties very well. Mm -hmm. Because he was a serious 
technocrat. But right now, he has, is now engaging in politics. And I can say partly succession politics. So his, his interest or his, uh, his focus much will be on the, on the politics at the moment <laughs> and not on the, on, the, on the technocrat thing of fixing and getting things done the way they are supposed to be done. Because since he was given the mandate to be in charge of the ministries, we've not seen service delivery so far. Because we believe, as, and as you mentioned it, why is it that he cannot fix, because now he's the prefect of the ministers. He has to get the record straight from each and every minister. He needs to whip the ministers into order. He needs to summon them and even suspend them or recommend suspension, because this is a prefect. And when you are a prefect, you have some powers that you can do a recommendation of suspension or a recommendation of uh, disciplinary action mm -hmm. to a minister so that you can have good service delivery. Okay? So when we come to food security, they are go they, we are going to have a big problem. Because one, even the Galana Kulalu thing, mm -hmm. where we believe it will it will it will also add to the food security of this country. The what whatever was done there is a shady thing. Money has been wasted. Mm -hmm. Money has been uh, 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 was, uh, has been uh, misappropriated in those areas, in, in in that sector. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we need to question ourselves. We need to have Galana Kulalu. How are we going to make it work? How are we going to make a realization? from this Galana Kulalu, right. so that we can have a full security in the country. Okay. Now, when we talk of, uh, there was what we call uh, fertilizer, the fertilizers were reduced down, eh? prices were reduced down for fertilizers. Yeah. Now, let us look at, at the companies that are supplying the fertilizers. One, are they accessible to farmers? Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, are they in the 47 counties? Because when you are talking about fertilizer, how many counties are, are relying on agriculture? And how many counties need this fertilizer? So, how is the supply of this fertilizer to the farmer? Okay? We have what we call also maize, the, the seed, and the, the, the seed for the beans. Okay? Now, we need to look all into all these things for us to have a good food security in the country. We have what we call the, the, the changes in the rainfall. The changes in the rainfall should not affect us. Egypt is relying on River Nile. The source of River Nile is Lake Victoria for its agriculture. And uh, we've not heard of uh, food insecurity in Egypt. Why? Because they have managed their, 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 their agriculture on irrigation in the best way possible. So what we need to do is this rainfall that is going to west, even right now Nairobi has no water, because we have poor management of resources that we have. <laughs> the rainwater can be tapped, can create water pans, can create dams, okay? Mm -hmm. But whatever we see is allocation of funds that are going to be misappropriated or going to someone's pocket. So these are some of the things that we need to mitigate and uh, ensure that are not in place. And I believe uh, our able ministers always get insights and uh, communication from what people air out. True. So they need to be on toes and make things happen. True. Because we are all suffering as a, as a, as a country, economic-wise, and also the, 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 the poor state of the country. All right. Walter, you remember in 2016 mm -hmm. there was a project that was coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the Northern, Northern Collector Tunnel. Uh, following next was the project about the dams. The Ministry of Agriculture will work together with the Ministry of Devolution, the Treasury, and, uh, and Water and Sanitation. I remember in 20, 2017 or 2018, uh, the CS10 for, for Water and Sanitation, uh, Honorable Amalo, said they, they are working on the Galana Kulalu, like uh, uh, Cyrus has mentioned. But those projects have stalled. 
as we speak we have several dams that have stalled in the rift valley these are the dams that could have assisted farmers in those regions how do you expect the new cs for agriculture to work together with other ministries to ensure we have achieved at least c2 dams within two years you say to work together with other ministries yes and for kenyans but it's always opposite you know every project started in kenya cartels look it has a cash cow. You have something with cartels. <laughs> yes. Do you know? It looks it as cash cow. Yeah, like they look. How will I? What will I eat here? Mm -hmm. That's why every dam you hear there is a scandal. Like now, the former f um, the treasury seers is out because of Kimware and Aror dams. Yes. So everything they look at, the cartels look as, at cash cows. Like they, you start a project like the Galana was a very good idea. It was the idea of like a communist country, where, you know, it was now like Kenya as a country farming. Mm -hmm. the, the farmer at Galana was Kenya. Mm -hmm. And if that project was well executed, imagine Kenya farming to feed its people. Mm -hmm. There would be no need of us suffering. I think we would be buying now Unga at 50 per packet, for 2 kg packet. Mm -hmm. Yes, but now it didn't work because somebody wanted to make money, billions out of it, and he succeeded, that guy succeeded. Because why would a, a, a project fail when they are not depending on rain, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, what irrigation has been done, they cannot fail because they, there was fertilizer supplied, and there were maintainers, a lot of cash was pumped in that project. Why would it fail? Why would it like not give a return on investment? Because somebody was like, if you were to supply, say, a thousand bags of fertilizer, somebody says, just supply a hundred. Others bring, let us manage. Mm -hmm. And they manage it. So if there were programs, if there were like, it was sincere that the program would work as it is, I think we'd be having, if it succeeded, we'd be having like over 50 of such farms all over Kenya. And it would be good. It would be good. We'd be selling surplus to countries like Egypt, who depend on Lake Victoria. And now this case, you see, sometimes Egypt even support us. Uh, support us. No, it's, it, no it's, it's very ridiculous. It's like now, <laughs> it's like now, let me say, who are billionaires of Kenya? Instead of them giving us cash, it is us giving them. Mm -hmm. Like, no water from Lake Victoria comes from from the rivers within Kenya. The, the, waters, the, the water that supply Lake Victoria are now the, river, the rivers like River Kuja, River Yala, the rivers that are in Kenya. They are the rivers that support Victoria. And then that water comes from Victoria and goes to Egypt. So it's like we supply Egypt with water. Mm -hmm. And then the products of water, it's them now supplying us with those projects. And we have those waters. Eh? So it's like uh, Galana was a perfect project. But because there are people who want to not eat because it's more than what they can eat. If they eat all they squander, they can die of obesity. <laughs> they can die of obesity. <laughs> I, I don't know how I put it. It's not, it's not eating. It's, it's wasting. It's wasting. You know, when somebody eats too much, there comes constipation. <laughs> and when constipation starts, okay. everybody in the room cannot be comfortable because there will be bad air around. <laughs> so it is now this bad air that we are suffering from that we call corruption. Thank you. Uh, this reminds me of one time uh, presidential candidate Abdul Badida when he was speaking of uh, you should not eat uh, uh, so much to fill yourself. You need to uh, leave some space for air. Yeah. Anyway, now, uh, let's of the Northern Collector Tunnel, I, has to, I have to mention about it because it was a project that was to collect all the running waters. Mm -hmm. We've been experiencing a rainfall that has seen a uh, loss of property and lives. Yes. And these are the waters that were to be collected uh, to have a sort of a dam. But now the people of those regions were told then that their area will be turned into desert. And we saw what happened next. Uh, we had Nairobi without water. We had other parts of the country, people dying because of hunger. Now, how then do we have, my, my question I feel is not still answered. How then will this new CS work with other people? What is one new thing you'll have, have to do that other people have not been doing? Thank you. And that's why I've uh, I persistently mentioned eh? the CS, what he needs to do right now to make it work. 
to make it work. Eh? He needs to go now to look at those mistakes. Now, from the policies that were put in place, mm -hmm. what raised eyebrows? Now, how can we mitigate on this? I remember about the the the, the not tunnel, yeah, yeah. Eh? Yeah. the thing from Muranga to. Uh, it was first of all politicized. Mm -hmm. When we talked of uh, water coming from Muranga to Nairobi to feed the people of Nairobi, mm -hmm. you see, then it was a wrong idea. But if it was meant for agriculture, then it was the best idea. So these are some of the things that I'm suggesting. The minister should look into such a project, then look at, this is where the eyebrow was raised. Now because uh, there is a good relationship between the, uh, the, 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 the minority and the majority in parliament, mm -hmm. and the minority are the ones who raise this concern, right. they can work together and look into the problems that were being raised then and how can we solve these problems so that we can have a something that is substantive to our people. So this is how we can work on it. And uh, secondly, the Minister of Agriculture should also look at this what we call soil pH. You see, at times we plant mm -hmm. what is not good for that area. So what we need also the means of agriculture should also focus on is on matters to do with soil pH. The laboratories should be up and running so that we have good advisories to our farmers right. that this is what we need to plant and not this. Because at times we plant maize and we are not supposed to plant maize. Maybe we are supposed to plant something else. And uh, for the sugar farmers in the sugar belt region, the entire western region, what they should look at right now is, now, what is the other cash crop that we can now invest in, apart from the sugar? Mm -hmm. Because now the sugar factories have died. Looking at uh, how, many, how much did the government pump into Mumias? How much did the government pump into Sony? Pumped a lot of money, billions. Mm -hmm. But what did it do? Nothing. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we cannot continue wasting monies or billions on things that are not going to give us results. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that the ministry should focus into. The failures that were mentioned mm -hmm. and make them success. But you should not come up with new projects because new projects will be a cash cow okay. for someone. All right. You, you, you mentioned of the people of the Western region coming up with an idea of another cash crop. And I'll tell you for a fact, the Mount Kenya region, we have like uh, two cash crops. That there is tea and there is coffee. And both are not doing well. Then uh, how come will the other people from the other side decide we can have something else? And then they cry of the same two things. Now, what will become of us? Now that I come from Western Kenya, I can handle that. You know, do you know that when there was mercury thing in sugar, mm -hmm. that uh, it was discovered that these factories, they import sugar from other countries and repackage during using their brands and sell, meaning they cannot produce enough. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they cannot produce enough means there's something. Because there's a vast land. Where I come from, there's vast land. You can stand here and look up to past Kitengela, it's just bare land, there's nothing in it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it means the poor management of our factories, of our agricultural sectors, mm -hmm. it was it what is bringing up that. So when you bring another cash crop, it's like you're bringing another problem. Just as you are saying that when you're bringing a new project, you're creating another cash crop. Mm -hmm. If you start saying that now you're going to create another project for, or another cash crop for the Western people, Cartels will be very interested. They will be sitting somewhere and say, hey, what's that now? Let us to chore every later in here. And they will chore and it will, they, it will, they will get it. So the problem is we fix what we have now. Mm -hmm. After fixing it, all will be okay. Yeah, now let me bring even the irrigation thing. There is a mission, a Catholic mission in my area, which is not so big. It's as big as the compound of KBC, those who know KBC where it is, or University of Nairobi main campus. Mm -hmm. But those people, 
I've never, they, they, they don't have drilled water. They harvest water from their roofs. They have never had water problem throughout since I was born. Mm -hmm. Even if there is a one year full drought, their water doesn't get over because they have some underground tanks and all that. And you see what happens in Kenya. When it comes to around um, December, people cry, oh, floods, floods too much, water is too much. Yeah. When it gets to around, uh, say, February, <laughs> oh, there's no water, there's no water. That is foolishness. <laughs> Especially in 2020, in the 21st century, mm. you cry of too much. In the next one month, you cry of too less. When you can harvest that, mm -hmm. imagine water killing people, several people in December. And two months later, so many people dry, dying because of drought. There's no water. Mm -hmm. See that? It's foolishness. And now that you have brought in the issue of climate change and weather, we, we had the Ministry of Forestation and I have to bring in the issue of Mao Forest because this is one area also that has been de be bedeviling the agricultural yes. sector because we have farmers who rely fully on rains. And this is one area that contributes mostly to our uh, economy as far as agriculture is of concern. Now, uh, Elito Kiriako Tobiko was undermined that he will ensure that the forest has been reserved not only in Mao but every other uh, country. And I remember just last week, the, pres the president, uh, in his statement, he mentioned that uh, as a country, they have committed to the UN to ensure that Kenya has 10% of forest coverage. Mm -hmm. How then? How then are we going to see there's more production because we have enough rains and we, ha we will not have uh, this uh, climatic change that co keeps on changing and we can't even predict what will happen tomorrow. Actually, it's generally we're yes. experiencing rains mm -hmm. and this is out of the norms. Mm -hmm. uh, what will farmers do in April? Because we're used to, to plant in April. What will, uh, are they planting now? Are these rains continue? Uh, thank you. Uh, on, fo on forest observations, I believe Tobiko was focused on Mao and uh, he managed it in one or the other. Although there was, there was some politics from one quarter. It has to be politicized, everything but in this country. I can say he tried with the, with the, with the support from the, the, the commissioner, Natembea. Mm -hmm. He did his best. And uh, for that we can say he managed it. But now when we look at the forestry in other areas, okay? Look at Nyandarua, the forest within Nyandarua, the Abadea forest. It is being encroached. The Kakamega forest, which, is, which forms part of equatorial forest, goes along to Uganda. It is being encroached in the Kenyan side. Mm -hmm. So the Mount Elgon forest is also being encroached. So what we need to do as a country we need also now to put a focus on these other forest areas. So how are we going to protect the, the areas? Now on the trees that were cut, how are we going to ensure that we plant like 10 trees for one tree that was cut so that we can manage the forests in the country, so that we can also manage the, 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 the climate in the country because there are changes in the rainfall and it didn't start today started some way back. But these are some of the things that, the, the, that uh, we've not actually looked into. So if we sit down and look into such things, and that's why I question the, the eligibility of ministries not working with institutions like mm -hmm. uh, universities on research. Because if we invest so much on research and get a tangible research, mm -hmm. then we shall manage these other things. We are failing because we are not putting much effort on research. We only just need to do things just because others are doing it. See, like he has mentioned something that uh, there is a Catholic mission in his area that have, has never lacked water. Mm -hmm. We don't need to benchmark in uh, UK we don't need to waste resources benchmarking in Uganda or somewhere else just to get to know what these people are doing to sustain themselves. We only need to identify a place like he has mentioned, where he comes from. Then we sit with these guys and ask them, how have you managed? Because I believe when 
I'm going to do my thesis or my research for doctorate. I'm not going to go out of this country. Mm -hmm. I will do research in this country True. before I go outside of the country. I'll do research in this country so that to support my research. Okay? So we need to do a research based on our own country from other areas that are doing better. How can we do better as a country as a whole? Mm -hmm. You see, that's a, an, an area that is doing good in water, collection, and supply. Never lacks. It never cries. So what can we do as a country? Mm -hmm. What can we emulate from them? Okay? So these are some of the things that governments and uh, ministries need to, to invest in, the research institutions, right. so that we can be at a better place. Mm -hmm. Because without research, we shall just do, we shall bring, we shall come up with ideas not well researched on, then along the way, they fail. And that's why cartels have um, a, a way of coming and uh, getting whatever they can get from that, making it a cash cow. All right. Yes. Now, uh, as we come to an end of the, this discussion, uh, what I want us to talk about the farm inputs. Uh, most of it is being imported to our country and still now that you keep on mentioning of cartels my, my, my question is how will the CAZ ensure that we have uh, zero cartels and farmers will have <coughs> inputs and have cheap inputs farm inputs to be specific you know we, are, we live in a country where everybody wants to be a tenderpreneur mm -hmm. people look for tenders in the most crooked way possible yes so I feel that if the government could, like new, the new CS, could identify things like youth groups so that to empower youths, mm -hmm. the groups of people with disabilities and all that to do the supplies, mm -hmm. things can be better instead of relying on people who are, who are moneyed, who are cartels, who are what. You know, there are people who, are, uh, who have even risen to positions mm -hmm. just because of cartelism. So mm -hmm. they continue exploring, they continue exploiting people mm -hmm. so that they get what they want. I would uh, ask that if the government could like come up with a strict resolution mm -hmm. that uh, there are interest groups, the affirmative groups, that these affirmative groups, small, small groups, small, small groups like from the rural area, not even from the major urban areas, mm -hmm. that they're the people who get to supply these things, so they come up like 10 of them, they're given loan, they supply these things, it would be better so that we wipe out the cartelism in this country because it's the thing that is derailing every effort by the government to clean the system. The system cannot be clean because some people want to continue uh, destabilizing it so that they get more. Mm -hmm. And again, we are too much on capitalist country. We are too much liberal. The liberalism also is affecting us because I feel that uh, the fact that uh, we are living in a man eat man society Survival for the fittest. Mm -hmm. They are the fittest to continue being fittest. There are people who are not fit to continue be dying. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would like the president to bring, the, just the way they were bringing in Galana Kulalu thing, they bring the communist thing so that we, there is the human part of us, even if we are fighting for resources and, and fighting to survive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A, a little before you respond to the same questions, I would like us to listen into uh, two of the statements the president had about the farming, uh, the farmers being paid, the mis farmers being paid, uh, the dues, and uh, that was when he was reprimanding the then CS, Mwangi uh, Kinjuri. If we could have the clip, please. These interventions, therefore, I do not. After a series of discussions between stakeholders, today I have directed the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture to authorize the National and the National and Cereals Produce Board through the Strategic Food Reserve to immediately and in coordination with respective county governments, open buying centers and stores to receive maize from farmers across the country. The Strategic Food Reserve has been authorized to purchase 2 million 90 kg bags of maize at a price 
of 2,500 shillings per bag. Shilingi bilioni mbili ya kulipa wakulima wetu wa maindi. Lakini kesho yake unasikia hiyo pesa mkulima hajalipwa. Lakini unasikia kuna mkulima ati ya medeliver kwa NCPB mahindi ya shilingi milioni miambili. Jameni niambieni ni nani? Mimi ni kona shamba na siyo ndogo. Niambie ni nani mkulima wae ana, anakuza Kenya hii mahindi ya shilingi milioni miambili. Sini ukora jameni? Sini ukora? Mutu anavuka hapa kwa mpaka anaingia Uganda anatafuta mahindi labda hata hatafuti anakuja kumwaga kulima ambaye ametoa jasho wa Kenya analaa watu soma sababu ya ukoro ya wachache na ndipo nilisema waziri wa kilimo bwana Kiunjuri tujue ya kwamba sasa mchezo umeisha tafuta hawa watu ambao wanakula mali ya wengine utuletee tufunge ama wewe mwenyewe utakuwa na shida katika hiyo shida mambo kwa sababu oh my so <laughs> you had imagine how good you have 10 acres of land mm. i have 5 mm. but i'm producing more maize to the factory or to mm. the ncpb more than you who have a bigger track of land but you know these guys have have have, have farms in there <laughs> no oh, okay actually so what, they, what will, they will cultivate they... in there and at the end of it <laughs> supply what? that air mm -hmm. and then they give a check of 200 million what happens eh, million. to such a scenarios eh? you have a, a, like uh, five acres of land mm -hmm. fine you are a bit able there's someone 10 3 5 people mm -hmm. have One acre, two acres, three acres. They have needs. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, this is what we call capitalism. Now, the one who has five acres has planted maize. Okay? He has done the harvest, has done his calculations, and he is looking at maybe getting 10,000 bags. Okay? But the farm he's cultivating on cannot give him 10,000 bags. So he looks at this other other farmers around uh, with mm -hmm. small small farms that can make him get to 10000 bags right. so he buys from them on a very little price and that's the okay? problem and that's the problem they have majority. yes he buys on them with a very little price mm -hmm. then he does what you call hoarding after he does the hoarding he comes then and sells it he bought a bag at 1000 mm -hmm. and then he comes and sells the bag at 3000 after holding after holding when they are seeing hakuna uh, mind yes mm. now this is the problem that we have so how are we going to educate our farmers mm. those ones who have small pieces of land so that they cannot be manipulated mm -hmm. with the ones who have big chunks of land then another issue mm -hmm. we have the cycle of harvesting Now let me mention of uh, the western region because I also come from there. Vihiga harvest maize in uh, August. Not uh, not uh, from Mwezwa Sita up they have the maize. Mm -hmm. When you come down to Kakamega they do Mwezwa Saba Mwezwa Nane. When you go down to Bungoma they do harvesting Mwezwa Nane or Tisa. When you go to Eldoret harvesting is always on October to November. Mm -hmm. So you see There's, a, there's someone somewhere seated knows the calendar of harvesting so he or she will run to this region purchase mm -hmm. maize put on on hoarding goes to this region time of harvesting he does the same goes round then this person has millions of bags and he has five acres of land okay so this is what i'm saying that we need to educate our small farmers mm -hmm. on how they can benefit themselves from the small things they get so that they, tomorrow they can double it right. okay because they they they, manip they are manipulated by the, 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 the other people whom my friend calls cartels mm -hmm. so these are some of the cartels that we have right. within us okay who also work with other forces from somewhere
Okay. Yes. Or I, I, I don't want to let you go because there's an issue I had raised. Uh, I wanted you to respond to the farm inputs. We have less than two minutes to uh, finish on this. What would be your idea into farm inputs being uh, supplied to farmers and supplied to farmers cheaply? Thank you. We need to have the data for the farmers. Then uh, we have uh, research done on what are the needs of the farmers. The pH of the soil should be conducted to, from each region. So when you have all these things, then the farm inputs will be well distributed to farmers with regard to their needs. Okay. But without all these mechanisms, then we shall continue having poor harvests and outcries. Okay. Then we shall not achieve the food security thing. And remember, the food security issue is not only for President Uhuru, but it is all for us, so that it can sustain the country in the coming years, for the coming generation. So those are some of the things that we need to invest in research, best research, using the best institutions that we have in the country. Right. We don't need to get specialists from outside the country, and yet we have good researchers in the country. So let us invest in research, institutions that are their research institutions, then do carry out a, a, a survey on the number of farmers and what they plant, and what they need, then the soil pH, so that we can have good results and good distribution of farm inputs to our farmers. Mm. Oh, good. My closing remark is that we should, it's high time we move to use embrace technology in our farming. Mm -hmm. Hilary, come on, it's too much, Buana. It's not like time we should continue using the farming met methods that were discovered during agrarian revolution time. Mm -hmm. We are, how many years from ag agrarian revolution? Thousands of years, and we are still embracing them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we should cry for maybe too much water because you cannot control nature. But we should not cry that at this time that there's no enough water to do farming mm -hmm. when irrigation is there and other methods. Yeah? And other methods of, like now, you know, when you go to now the local farmers, they still carry hose to the shamba and do that. There's a way that the government can use the, the modern technology to improve our agriculture. It's high time we move from agrarian evolution methods to modern methods so that we improve, we get more yields, and uh, we create easy work for our farmers. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you, gentlemen, for coming, and uh, thank you for all your ideas. I, I heard you say it as saying uh, the man is not fit for the office. He's a failure, and Oguda was saying he's okay, he can do it. Otherwise, those are your opinions. Many thanks for keeping us company back home. Coming up next will be Valentine with the Man Crush Monday, uh, dealing with an empowered woman, part two. If you listened to part one or if you didn't, you'll find it on YouTube. But part two is coming up next. My name is Dereva Hillary. Thank you so much for being part of us. Good morning. <laughs>